Dear friends, welcome to EPG Patshala. I am Dr. Nitesh Goel from DAV College, Chandigarh. I am going to present before you the 31st module titled Cluster Analysis under the paper Tourism and Hospitality Research. The module will be covering following topics. The introduction, the cluster analysis itself, the uses of cluster analysis, the assumptions related to cluster analysis, the cluster analysis process and the cluster analysis with the help of SPSS output sheet and finally the summary. Dear friends, after the completion of this module, you will be able to understand the meaning and the scope of cluster analysis. You will be able to understand how cluster analysis actually works. You will be able to understand how to interpret the results under the cluster analysis. First of all friends, I would like to give you a brief introduction about the topic. Research has been classified as science as well as an art. This means that research follows a predefined process in order to make research by one fellow comparable with another. It also means that research is a discipline in which a researcher becomes more apt to practice. Once the data has been collected, the next phase in the research process in data analysis. The data analysis is the process by which sense is made out of the data gathered. The process of data analysis consists of multiple phases. The first phase of data analysis is data processing, which basically refers to organizing the data for analysis by arranging it into rows and the columns. The softwares like SPSS are used for statistical analysis. Therefore, in our case, data processing refers to inputting the data into software specific format. Therefore, the data processing refers to the structuring of the data so that it can be lent itself to analysis better. The structured data is referred to as the data set. The second stage of data analysis is data cleaning. Data cleaning refers to removing of errors from the data set. These errors might be in form of incomplete data, duplicate entries or typing errors. In simplest of forms, data cleaning refers to identify the inaccuracies in the data and then removing them. The third stage of data analysis is exploratory data analysis. Exploratory data analysis refers to the process of generating means and median for the data in order to understand the basic nature of the data. This is done in order to identify the messages hidden in the data and to develop an insight into what form of detailed analysis can be undertaken on the data. The next phase of data analysis is developing and applying models for testing the hypothesis. Algorithms like correlation, ANOVA, factor analysis, cluster analysis, discriminant analysis, etc. are applied to find relationships among the variable and also to test the nature of this kind of relationship. Therefore, the data analysis process is the data analysis techniques 
that are divided into three broad categories that is univariate analysis, bivariate analysis and multivariate analysis. The univariate analysis refers to an analysis when there is only one variable in the study. Common techniques used in this analysis are mean, median, mode and standard deviation. Bivariate analysis is an analysis when there are two variables involved in the study. The common techniques used in this analysis are correlation, bivariate regression, t-test, ANOVA, etc. Multivariate analysis is an analysis where more than two variables are involved in the study. Some of the common techniques used for this analysis are the multivariate regression, the discriminant analysis, logistic regression, M ANOVA, the factor analysis, the cluster analysis, etc. The current lesson discusses one of the techniques of multivariate analysis only that is the cluster analysis. Now we take on the cluster analysis. Grouping similar objects or cases into homogeneous groups is the fundamental purpose of cluster analysis. Cluster analysis refers to a class of techniques which is used to create homogeneous groups from cases are the objects. One of the key uses of cluster analysis is in market segmentation. A company by converting a heterogeneous market into an homogeneous one is able to understand the needs and the wants of the customers more efficiently and effectively. The homogeneous groups are referred to as clusters in the cluster analysis. It is important to note that the cluster is a homogeneous group within itself on the basis of the characteristics which is used to form the clusters. However, clusters are heterogeneous amongst themselves that is cluster 1 and cluster 2 will have different characteristics on the same variable which is used to cluster the cases. Both cluster analysis and discriminant analysis are the techniques which are concerned with classification of objects or the cases. The main difference between the two is that the discriminant analysis requires the knowledge of clusters before the classification rule can be developed for the discriminant analysis. However, cluster analysis is a technique which has no prior knowledge about the classification and therefore it would not be wrong to say that discriminant analysis is a technique which is actually based on cluster analysis that is in most cases cluster analysis is done before undertaking the discriminant analysis. Now let us take on some of the uses of cluster analysis. Friends following are the main uses of cluster analysis. First understanding the cluster behavior. Cluster analysis as a technique is used to identify the groups within the cases. These groups are homogeneous in nature. For example, a hotel manager wants to understand what strategies to implement in order to increase the sales on a Tuesday in North India. Now why we have taken this example? Because Tuesday being a day when North Indians do not consume alcohol or non-veg for religious reasons. One other option that the hotel manager has is to study North India as a whole. But the whole North India is not his target customers. He has a specific set of customers whom he is trying to sell his product. This set of customers is homogeneous in nature which is based on some characteristics like income religion, purchase behavior, etc. Cluster analysis is used in order to divide the market into homogeneous groups and then understand the behavior of various clusters so as to reach the target most profitable. Second, 
identify new product opportunities. In the same example, it can be seen that while studying the various segments, the hotel manager might be able to identify the products or services which he had not thought of before. Therefore, cluster analysis is also used to identify new product opportunities. The third use is reducing data. It is important to note here that factor analysis is a technique which is used for dimension reduction while cluster analysis is a technique which is used for reducing the data. So friends after having the uses now we take on the assumptions of cluster analysis. Cluster analysis and its related procedures are based on same set of assumptions as multiple regression. First, no outliers. One of the basic assumptions of cluster analysis is that the data set does not have any outliers. Second, linear relationships. The second assumption of cluster analysis is that the variables should have a linear relationship. Cluster analysis as a tool is a study of correlation between the variables. Therefore, if there is no linear relationship, cluster analysis cannot work. Next is the interval data. Another important assumption for cluster analysis is that the data must be collected at least on interval scale. Cluster analysis cannot be applied on nominal or an ordinal scale. The next assumption is the lack of high multicollinearity. It is important that in cluster analysis, the data set does not exhibit multicollinearity. Multicollinearity refers to the tendency of a variable to be significantly correlated with multiple variables under study. The next assumption is normality for purposes of significance testing. As discussed above, cluster analysis is one of the parametric techniques of analysis. Therefore, the assumption of normality is important for cluster analysis. Now we come to the process of cluster analysis. Cluster analysis is based on the simple process of measuring distance between the cases or objects. In cluster analysis, the cases which have minimum distance with each other are put in one cluster. This process is repeated until one lands up with multiple groups which have minimum distance amongst the members within the group. Though the fundamental of cluster analysis is very simple, the process of cluster analysis is divided into four steps. As per the first step, decide on the clustering variable. The first step in the cluster analysis is to determine the variable on basis of which the cases have to be grouped together. This variable can be as simple as age, gender, income or as complex as a psychographic variable like culture. It is very important that if a researcher is choosing multiple variables to group cases, then the variables should not have multicollinearity. The variables can be classified into general variables or specific variables and also into observable variables and unobservable variables. General variables refer to culture, demographic variables, while specific are referred to usage frequency, brand loyalty, etc. Observable variables refers to those variables which can be measured. Example, usage frequency on unobservable variables out ones which needs to be inferred and cannot be measured directly. For example, personality values, etc. Second, decide on the clustering procedure. In the second step, it prefers to determine how the clusters 
are to be formed. There are three main procedures for determining the clusters. These are hierarchical method first of all. This refers to the method for assigning a particular case to a group. There are three steps to this method again. First, the choose method or the agglomerative or the divisive. There are two basic methods for clustering that is agglomerative and the divisive. Agglomerative method is the one where the clustering procedure starts at the point where each of the cases is an individual cluster. It is in the subsequent processes that the clusters are merged to form an optimum solution. Reverse is true for divisive method that is all the cases are clustered together into one cluster and then cases are taken out and put back in detail in optimum solution is reached. The second is choose the measure that is Euclidean distance Shibashev distance, city block distance. As discussed before, cluster analysis is all about measuring the distance between the cases. The cases which have minimum distance are clubbed together into one cluster. The main question to be answered here is how to measure the distance. There are three methods of measuring distance, Euclidean distance, Shebyshev distance and the city block distance. The formulas you can observe on your screen, the formulas you can see on the screen. Out of these three methods, the first method is the most commonly used method for cluster analysis. Then comes choosing the clustering algorithm that is single linkage nearest neighbor, complete linkage that is the furthest neighbor, average linkage that is the Ward's method, the centroid. The next stage in the hierarchical method is to decide the clustering algorithm to use. Some of the common clustering algorithms are single linkage, the complete linkage, the average linkage and the centroid method. The algorithm basically refers to what two points to measure the distance between. For example, in centroid method, a geometric center for each cluster is computed and then the distance between these centroids is measured. In single linkage method, the distance between the two short test cases in the cluster is measured. Centroid and Ward's method are the most commonly used clustering algorithms. It is important to note here that in hierarchical method, the number of clusters is not known. It is more of an exploratory kind of clustering where number of clusters as decided on the basis of agglomerative schedule. Then comes the partitioning method or the k-means method. The another method for cluster analysis is the k-means method. As far as marketing is concerned, this is the most important method. In k-means method, the clusters are not based on distance measures as is the case in the hierarchical clustering. In this method, within cluster variation is used as a measure for forming the cluster. This procedure aims clustering the data in such a way that within the cluster of variation is minimized. Therefore, this is treated as a more reliable method as compared to the hierarchical clustering method. However, friends, it is important to note here that the starting point of this analysis is dependent upon some prior information about the total number of clusters. The clustering process starts by randomly assigning cases to the clusters and then 
दीज केसेज आर री असाइंड टू मिनिमाइज दी वेरिएशन विद इन दी क्लस्टर नेक्स्ट इज दी टू स्टेप मेथड टू स्टेप मेथड इज अ मेथड विच इज यूज इन ऑर्डर टू रिटेन द बेस्ट ऑफ बोथ दी मेथड्स इन दिस पर्टिकुलर केस अ रिसर्चर फर्स्ट अंडरटेक्स दी हरारिकल मेथड इन ऑर्डर टू डिटर्मिन दी नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स एंड देन अप्लाइज द की मीन्स मेथड टू डिराइव द क्लस्टर मेंबरशिप थर्ड स्टेप डिसाइड ऑन द नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर द हरारिकल मेथड इज बेस्ट सुटेड फॉर डिसाइडिंग द नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स दैट द रिसर्चर वॉन्ट्स टू गो विद इट इज पॉसिबल फॉर अ रिसर्चर टू डिसाइड द नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स इधर ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ सेकेंडरी डेटा और ऑन द बेसिस ऑफ एक्सपीरियंस इन इधर वन ऑफ द केसेज इट इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अ रिसर्चर टू डिसाइड द नंबर ऑफ क्लस्टर्स बिफोर द एनालिसिस कैन बी टेकन टू द नेक्स्ट स्टेज दैट इज वेलिडेशन एंड इंटरप्रिटेशन सो आई जस्ट सेड नाउ the next step comes is the validate and interpret the cluster solution it is very important to assess the stability and validate the of the cluster solution generated stability is evaluated using different clustering procedure on the same data set similarly validating of the solution is more qualitative in nature a researcher needs to a researcher needs to assess face validity and criterion validity by using various methods like theoretical validation and expert judgment now after having understood what is cluster analysis let's have a better view through an spss software in order to understand the cluster analysis we continue with the example used in the module that presented the anova In the year 2001 Goa's share of the total foreign tourists coming to India was 4.78% of the total foreign tourists arrival in India as per the report of tourism 2002 This year of Goa of the total foreign tourists coming to India has decreased to 2.47% total foreign tourist arrival in India as per the report of 2014 the empty beaches and shacks are a point of concern for the incumbents in this industry in goa the incumbents of the industry hire a researcher to study the factors affecting the customer satisfaction the researcher as a part of the analysis now wants to compare the customer satisfaction from goa in terms of foreign tourists the countries under analysis include uk USA and Europe the researcher has now developed a list of variables on the basis of some review of literature which influences the customer satisfaction therefore the question it contains a section for independent variables and a section for customer satisfaction based on review of literature the researcher made a list of all the factors which could influence the customer satisfaction from goa these variables included the holiday experience perception about the heritage tour experience accommodation facilities food experience safety and hygiene dimensions cleanliness on beaches and overall nightlife and local information in all 13 variables were chosen for the study in order to help the researcher with data analysis and to understand the nature of the data factor analysis was applied on these 13 variables however the researcher's analysis of independent variables would be incomplete if he does not understand the levels of customer satisfaction therefore for the current research problem it would be greatly beneficial for the researcher and the decision maker to understand how these 13 variables 
influence the levels of customer satisfaction that is high medium and low however in order to do this analysis the researcher needs to divide customers into three clusters that is one being high two being medium and three being low or dissatisfied customers the steps are as follows the step 1 select analyze and then click classify though in the current example we already know that the number of clusters to be generated is 3 and therefore we can apply the k means method here directly yet for discussion purposes we will apply first the hierarchical clustering method the second step move the variable chosen for analysis into the box marked in the current example it would be satisfaction the third step in the buttons marked statistics plots and methods the default processes are well accepted for analysis and then press okay in the fourth step the first output table is the case processing summary the table on your screen indicates that there were 101 respondents in the research the next output table in spss is the agglomerative schedule because the agglomerative schedule contains 100 rows only top few rows and the bottom ones are illustrated in this figure of this figure illustrates the stages in the agglomeration schedule friends notice that the last row is 100 which indicates that it is a two cluster solution now recall that in agglomeration schedule stage 1 is where each one of the cases forms of independent clusters the number of clusters in this particular case is decided by subtracting the coefficients of one stage from another stage at which the decrease in the coefficient is maximum is considered the most optimum cluster solution in this example because there are 101 cases stage 100 is two cluster solutions and 99 is the three cluster solutions the decrease in the coefficient between 100 and 99 is 3.135 and 1.013 that is 2.122 in the subsequent stages the decrease in coefficient is less than this value and therefore three cluster solution is the most optimum one then the next step to apply the k means cluster analysis select analyze and then classify the rest of the process is similar to hierarchical cluster analysis one of the main difference is in the process is that the researcher has to mention the number of clusters in our current example notice in the following figure that the number of clusters has been specified as 3 then for further analysis which we will use in discriminant analysis it is important to save the cluster membership in order to do this simply click on save and cluster membership click continue and okay the direct resultant of this choice would be that an additional column would be added in the data sheet specifying the cluster membership of that particular case this particular column would be used during the discriminant analysis however in cluster analysis it can be used to check the stability and the validity of the clusters one of the tables in the output sheet is the attrition history this table indicates that after the fifth attrition the cluster solution was relatively stable and after the fifth attrition no more changes in the cluster membership was required there is another important table in the output sheet as you can see on your screen is the final cluster centers this particular table indicates that using overall satisfaction 
the centroid of cluster number 1 was equal to 4.83 centroid of cluster number 2 was equal to 3.18 and centroid of cluster number 3 was equal to 1.08 now recall a likert scale on which data was collected where 1 was for dissatisfaction and 5 was for satisfaction Using the scale, we can say that cluster number 1 represents satisfied customers, cluster number 2 represents neutral customers and cluster number 3 represents dissatisfied customers. Now from the next table, you can observe that there are three groups which are homogeneous among themselves and heterogeneous with each other. These clusters can be further analyzed using various statistical analysis to understand of a specific group. Friends, let's summarize the module. Cluster analysis refers to a set of techniques which is used in order to divide objects or cases into relatively homogeneous groups. Though the fundamental of cluster analysis is very simple. The process of cluster analysis is divided into four steps. Decide on the clustering variable. Second, decide on the clustering procedure. Third, decide on the number of clusters. And fourth, validate and interpret the cluster solution. The process and the output sheet of the cluster analysis has been discussed in detail in this chapter for a better understanding. Thank you.